Today, there is a pretty heated debate going on in the UK. Royalists are upset by King Charles's plans to have his spoiled son and daughter-in-law, Harry and Meghan, on the balcony during the coronation ceremony. These royal fans are promising to take strong action against the king if he does this. One citizen said, The duplicitous duo think they are dangling the carrot. Perhaps the royal family doesn't care two hoots about these two. Harry has hurt his father and brother immensely and the monarchy. Although it will be hard for the king to pass over his younger son, it would be madness to allow Harry and Meghan on the balcony, given what the reaction of the crowd might be. It should be a day to support and show affection to the king and queen and those members of the family who have tirelessly supported the monarchy, often working quietly in the background. My list would be the Prince and Princess of Wales and their children, Princess Anne and her husband. The Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh and their children, Princess Alexandra, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Duke, and hopefully the wonderful Duchess of Kent. I am afraid Harry and Meghan do not meet the criteria. And incidentally, if the reports are true that they still have not said if they're even going to come to the coronation or not, it just goes to show how incredibly self-absorbed and ill-mannered they really are. We've just got a little over four weeks left, so Harry at least needs to know that the logistics of an event like that require a lot of planning. Them trying to keep their options open is so incredibly selfish. I really hope that invitation to the coronation came with an RSVP cutoff date, after which silence is assumed to be a refusal. If they do attend, it would be smart for them to keep a very low profile indeed. British crowds are pretty good at making their feelings known, of course in the most polite way possible. And if the king does allow Meghan and Harry on that balcony, is he even prepared to deal with the backlash? How would his loyal son, his brother and sister feel about having to share the balcony with the two of them who have relentlessly attacked the king and the Prince of Wales over the past few years? How can he then turn around and ask for support from other non-working royals for events like garden parties, when apparently disloyalty is rewarded but loyalty is treated so poorly? Charles has not handled this very well. This should not be the focus of discussion this far out. The date for the RSVP should have been a month ago, and that should have been made public with the acceptance list published immediately. And then another citizen weighed in, saying, Good Lord, I hope not, and doubt if they will be allowed to be on the balcony. Truth be told, most of us here in the UK would prefer them not to come at all. In fact, we would love it if they never came back here ever again. They are now regarded as traitors and lower than vermin by most of us. They will be treated as such by the public. I wonder if Harry, who is famously dim, ever thinks, I used to be happy and fairly well loved by the folks in the UK. I was a naughty uncle who was forgiven for my transgressions. People knew I was a quite decent chap at heart. I may have been single and been having trouble finding a woman to marry, but I was loved and supported by my family and most of the public. Now look at me, derided and hated by almost everyone in the UK because I married Megan, who has turned my life into one of constant misery and conflict. On a more serious note, though, nobody really can predict what's going to happen in the future. And I'm guessing that the king, on a personal level and in spite of everything that's happened, would just love his son to be by his side. And if Megan is the price that he has to pay, well, I guess he figures so be it. I wouldn't be shocked at all because there have been rumors in some corners of the internet that the king has actually asked Harry to come back over and over again, that he's told him all will be forgiven, and he's apparently said that multiple times. That said, King Charles is not dumb, and he has made the longest internship in human history, so he knows very well how the monarchy functions, and he has to know that by allowing Harry and Meghan up on that balcony, he would be shooting himself in the foot. The thing about it is, the king cannot afford to be booed by the public and lose the very little bit of popularity that he's got right now, especially when the people of Britain seem to prefer a King William rather than a King Charles after Her Majesty passed away. Now, he could be a loving father, that could be his priority, but he is also the king, and if he cannot make the difficult choices that come with being at the top, then perhaps it's just not meant to be. So I, like so many other people out there, just hope that this benevolence we're seeing from Charles ends at attending the ceremony and not with including Harry and Meghan up on that balcony. That would be so damaging to his reign if he even cares. And that's the real question that people are focusing on right now.
Reportedly, Camilla's family might be allowed on the balcony because they're going to be the children and grandchildren of the queen. So technically, it's possible that we might see Harry and Meghan up there. But those individuals, Camilla's family, I mean, are not despised by the people of the UK like Meghan and Harry are. If Meghan and Harry are up there, I think booing is a very likely thing. Actually, Charles has already gotten booed by the public a few times now on walkabouts, and he's gotten egged too. So it's a real likelihood that it would be difficult to discern who was being booed on Coronation Day. There's also a factor here that occurred to me. Charles is actually a pretty jealous person, especially when it comes to attention, which he didn't get a whole lot of when he was growing up. See, I think both Charles and Diana suffered from a real lack of attention when they were growing up, and that's one thing that united them. Now, Camilla, her upbringing was totally different, so she didn't have that problem. Some YouTubers have challenged me on that. They said I was trying to defame the late queen. But people in the know do understand that Charles suffered a lot when he was a little boy, and later on, he also suffered from a lack of attention from his mother and his father, too. I mean, it wasn't their fault. They were incredibly busy, but still, it was hurtful to a young Charles. And there is somebody whose opinion really does matter in this whole situation, and that's William. I do wonder how far the pain has gone for Charles, hearing that so many people prefer William to Charles as king. People are wearing t-shirts saying, not my king, etc. And Charles has been booed on some outings. With Camilla tagging along, egging is also a factor. One of the biggest factors, though, in the Charles and Diana saga was that people wanted more of Diana and less of Charles, and that was very painful for him to accept. Now, obviously, that was never really the case with Camilla because nobody has ever really been so interested in her. I always laugh when I read comments alluding to the fact that Charles and Diana were not well suited to each other. I guess one thing was that Charles thought Diana was not very intelligent, which was a real problem for him. But I don't really know if that's true. I mean, I think Diane was probably just as smart as Charles is. Charles likes to pretend that he's very, very intelligent, but I'm not convinced. And the fact that William did so well academically, it has to come from the Spencer side. Charles, I think, just managed to squeeze through. Diana gave up, and she decided to go to work. Now, I think Camilla is pretty clever, though. So maybe Harry being invited to this event is gonna hurt William. That would be very vengeful, though. Now, maybe. It's not a statement. It's just a suggestion. Harry on the balcony would obviously hurt William and Catherine more than any other member of the family. Does Charles even care, though? I am sure they will not stand close to each other or interact with each other. After all, how could we forget the way that Harry attacked Catherine in that stupid book of his? We'll just have to wait and see what happens on that day. I mean, some people are just going to focus on Camilla and say that it's not fair for her to be in that position. Personally, I see all the hard work that Camilla has done, but some people are still saying that Diana had to die for Camilla to have that crown. Personally, I don't think that's fair, but that is some people's perspective. And you, what do you think about this couple? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments section. If you think my video is helpful, don't be afraid to like and share it with your friends and family members who would enjoy it too.